On this episode of Leadership and Loyalty Tips today, we're going to take a look at why, if you can master it, curiosity may be the most powerful leadership skill you'll ever have. Welcome to Leadership and Loyalty Tips for Executives out of the Full Monty Leadership Series. I'm your host, Dov Barron, founder of Full Monty Leadership. If you're a new listener, new viewer, thank you for joining us. Strap yourself in. We're about to go full Monty. If you're a regular, thank you for joining us and thank you for making us the number one show for Fortune 500, Next Gen Leaders, and a bunch of other great categories and keeping us right at the top. We really appreciate you sharing the show with everybody you know. Thanks for keeping us relevant. Get yourself over to, we need it, go over to iTunes, rate, review, and subscribe to the show. All right, let's dive right in. Let's strip it down. Every show, I sign off the show by saying, stay curious, my friend, stay curious. And here's where I'm curious. Do you know what that means? What does it actually mean to be curious? Well, if we look it up, being curious means eager to know or eager to learn. So what I'm saying to you is, are you eager to know? Are you eager to learn? Let's take a look inside of curiosity for a moment. The question is, and here's what I want you to know, when we're thinking about curiosity, are you committed to being interesting or are you committed to being interested? Because as a leader, we're often very sort of focused on ourselves and we can become very committed, unconsciously often, but committed to being very interesting. But curious people are very interested. They're committed to being interested. Great leaders are very committed to being interested. Curious people listen differently than non-curious people. When we're in a conversation, uh, very often we can appear to be listening. You've had, you've had those like, situations, right, where you, you're talking to somebody and, you know, you, you can see that they're not quite there. You can see that they've somehow checked out. And, then, you know, and sometimes their eyes, are, some of these people are very good at it. They, they really look like they're listening to you. But you can tell they're not quite there. So very often we can appear to be listening. And we may even, because I know people like this, who actually hear the words. If you say you're not listening, they can repeat the words. But are they really hearing what was said? Are you really hearing what was said? See, there are two ways to listen. We can listen with the intention to reply. We're, we're listening to what's being said, but we're formulating the answers before the other person has even finished speaking. Why? Because we've already presumed, we've already jumped ahead. We're no longer curious. We're in now presumption about what's being said and why it's being said. Or we can listen with the intent to hear, to hear the nuances being spoken, being said in, in every tonality, in, in, in the cadence of the, of the speed of the words, of the volume or the lack thereof. It is said that those with a great musical ear have the ability to hear the symphony of silence between the notes that bonds and orchestrates the true beauty of music. That is the same with the curiosity of a conversation. What are the notes of the people of the conversations, of the people in your organization, of the people you do business with, what are the notes in the silence between them? What if you really got curious about the things that you think you know? Not just the people. Let, let's, let's, let's start there. What if you got really curious about the people that you think you know? If you dug a little deeper, what if you became curious about yourself. You see, I would put it to you that true curiosity equals courage. See, the more I can presume that I know you, the more I can presume that I know myself, the safer I am. 
But the less I presume that, the less safe I am. It takes courage for me to really sort of reach out and say, well, let me just understand you a little more. Let me dig a little deeper. Let me discover more about you. Let me reveal a little more about myself. Let me become more courageous about myself. Are you willing to be curious about who you are and what you believe? Are you willing to become a Sherlock Holmes-like sleuth about not only what you believe, but why you believe it. You see, we are made up of these filters that we've taken on. So when you hear something, you hear it through the filters. And then when you speak, the very thing you heard through those filters, you speak it through an even greater level of filters. So somebody says to you, Oh, you know, I had a, I'm making one up here, but you know, I had a, uh, a squabble with a worker. I had a, um, a, a, a peer, we had a conflict and, you know, this person said this to me and, and I felt like that. But is that what was really said to you? Are you curious? Are you willing to be curious about what was actually said? If you could go back, if you could be curious about going back in your mind, and playing it like a videotape that was not caught in the loop of your own filter. I wonder what you would hear differently. I wonder if you'd hear your own tonality, because we don't. I wonder if you'd be willing to hear all those things. You see, we hold ideas about things as being right or wrong. We've got this big thing with right or wrong. You know what I mean. You understand that? Particularly as leaders, we, 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 we're very attached to the idea of what is right and wrong. But how did you decide what was right or wrong? Are you willing to be curious about whether something actually is right or wrong? See, whatever your religious belief is, in fact, even if you have none, even if you consider you're an atheist, that is a set of beliefs. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but have you been willing to be curious about it? Or are you just running everything through your filters? Because when you hear that conversation, you have that disagreement, you, you deal with that issue, whatever it is, you try to come to making that decision, whatever that is, it's all being heard through your filters of right or wrong, good or bad, black or white. But what if we're wrong? What if we're wrong? I was having a conversation with a good friend of mine just a few minutes before we went live, talking about romantic love and how there's the presumption that if people get married, they must love each other. Well, that's a false presumption. It's a false presumption, period, because even here in the Western world, a lot of people get married for all the wrong reasons, and it's not love. But if we presume it even at a larger level, and we go cross-cultural, we're going to find some very big surprises because there are lots of arranged marriages. And actually, if you look at the majority of people who are married in the world, they're married. The majority are married through arranged marriages or marriages of convenience, marriages of, uh, of bringing two families together, marriages of bringing two, two pieces of land or two sets of wealth together. You know, we tend to think of this as being something that existed three, four hundred years ago, but this is something that exists today, right now. And a lot of it is still going on in the Western world. So we have this false presumption of romantic love. But now let's just shift your world for a moment and put you into one of those cultures where all marriages are by arrangement. Then don't you think that that's the right way? And that these people who get married for sexual attraction, that can't be right. What have you got curious about what it is that you hold as true? What have you got curious about how you look at business and how you do business, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a CEO, whether you're a, a present generation leader or a next generation leader? See, as leaders, we tend to say, well, this is the way you do it. But we're not bothered to be curious about maybe it was the way we did it and maybe it worked, but maybe it doesn't work anymore. What if you got curious about a better way to do it? And I've challenged you on previous shows to take a look at being curious about who's the next Uber of your industry. Because if you were in the taxi business just a 
a little while ago, I mean, less, think about this, less than 10 years ago, you felt pretty secure in your taxi business. Because if somebody wanted a cab, they hailed you or called you and they had to get it. Now they don't. Now we don't have to bother with the licensing and all the other things that are there. And now Uber has skipped right ahead of that and stolen that entire industry. And now many other companies are following in their wake. What if you got curious about how you think things are and they're not? What if you got curious about being wrong? What if you used being wrong as not a bad thing, but as a good thing? So what if you look at the most successful part of your business right now and you say, okay, what if this has become very successful? What if this is actually the recipe for failure or for, success, uh, for, for not succeeding, for actually going in a downward spiral in 10 years or within 10 years? What if you got curious about that? Instead of saying, well, this is how we do it and this is how we have success and this is what we've done, what if you're wrong? What if you took that on as a really great thing? What if the next uh, discrepancy you get into with somebody that you love, what if you approach that with the willingness of being interested rather than interesting? What if you approach that with the curiosity of being somebody who actually listened with intent to hear, how much more would you get out of that conversation? How much more impact would that have on both of the people involved? Being wrong isn't bad unless you make it bad. Being wrong isn't bad unless you're committed to being right. What if you got curious about everything you hold as true? What if you got curious about embracing disruption? And if you got curious enough to say, how can we disrupt our own industry? How can we disrupt our own business rather than waiting for somebody else to do it? Get curious about those kinds of things. Get curious about building a culture that bonds your people together rather than presuming that they're bonded by the salary or by the benefits. What if you got curious to your people, not just within your own mind, but actually actively curious. You see, curiosity is this, 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 it's this amazing thing because it allows things into the recipe that were not part of the recipe before. Well, this is how you do it. Have you, I mean, have you ever eaten scrambled eggs? It's pretty simple, right? You take some eggs and you, you beat them around in a, in a container and then you pour them in the pan. That is scrambled eggs. But have you ever had scrambled eggs that were spectacular? Of course you have. If you like scrambled eggs, of course you have. And what was in there? Well, there was a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, and maybe there was some of your favorite cheese or some goat cheese or some blue cheese or some something else, or maybe there was a few chilies and a little bit of spinach, and maybe there was some other spices, things you had never considered because this is how you learn to make scrambled eggs. And so somebody said, how do you make scrambled eggs? This is how you do it. But what if there's 10 million ways to create this recipe called scrambled eggs. Well, what if that scrambled eggs is your business? What if that scrambled eggs is your relationships? What if you got curious about making it so much more flavorful, so much more depth to it, so much more, mm. So this is Dove Baron saying to you, if you wanna get curious, about creating positive disruption inside of your organization and building a culture that generates leaders within there, becoming just not just what you not just what you need to be, not just what you want to be, but both of those and got curious about it and create a level of engagement in the people. What would it take for you to become just so curious about how to engage your people? Then reach out to me at fullmontyleadership.com. And remember, I've got a gift for you. It's at Matrix, like the movie, M-A-T-R-I-X dot fullmontyleadership.com. Matrix dot fullmontyleadership.com. And there you can get curious about the five categories of authentic leadership and see just how much of an authentic leader you really are in each of the five categories. Get curious about that. It would be really cool to see what you come up with as your results. And then when you get the results, you'll get the results in each of the five categories. Get curious 
about how you can be better. Because one of the things that I've heard from people is, I thought I was going to really score high in this particular category, and I didn't. And then they said to me, what do you think I need to do? And my answer is, become curious. How can I do it better? This is Dov Barron. I want to thank you for joining me here at Leadership and Loyalty Tips for Executives, part of the Full Monty, ser- Full Monty Leadership Series. I want to thank you for sharing the show with everybody you know. And remember, as always, we need your help to keep us relevant. So get over to iTunes, rate, review, and subscribe to the show. Until next time, Dov Barron, Full Monty Leadership. Stay curious, my friends. Stay curious about how you can be more curious.